Greeting shippers, welcome back. It's time to take a look at yet another comic ship. Today we're taking a look at a small yet very acknowledged and even referenced, albeit at times tongue in cheekedly by Can itself. We're gonna be going over to DC Comics to take a look at the pairing Boostal or Blue and Gold or Blue Slash Gold, the pairing of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Of course, before we get started, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so you never miss a vid, one of our sporadic, sporadic vids. Booster Gold and Blue Beetle rose to prominence, not even as a ship, but as a friendship during the Justice League International and America runs in the 1980s, the mid to late 80s and onward. Though the characters had met a little earlier, this series would highlight the hijinks and also highs and lows and become a core part of each character, especially Booster. So as always, let's meet the players. First up, Booster Gold, aka Michael John Carter, a character who debuted in 1986 in his own self-titled comic. Booster was a superhero out to make a profit and a name for himself as a branded hero. While there was a genuine desire for heroism present, it could often be masked by material Materialism, opportunism, and immaturity. Over time, he would come to be less selfish and find himself taking on more heroic tasks for their own sake. Though he would oftentimes be doubted, except by the one person he instantly clicked with, Blue Beetle, who not only was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but was the kind of friend you could tell anything to, would ride or die on any scheme, and was able to see through a lot of Booster's escapades to the big heart lurking underneath. Although some of them were just escapades. Next up, Blue Beetle, Ted Cord, who is actually the second Blue Beetle, and a result of the Silver Age, which saw the rebirth of many Golden Age characters, but as new people with new backstories, not only for a new era, but to comply with shifting guidelines. Blue Beetle actually did not start off life as a DC character, but instead as a Charlton Comics character. He was also the inspiration for Night Owl and the Watchmen, not Batman. Fun fact. He debuted in 1966 in Captain Adam 83. He would end up being acquired by DC along with the rest of the Charlton Comics characters, or well, most of them, in 1983, three years before the company folded entirely. That was in 1986, the same year him and Booster would debut for DC. He too would be relaunched in his own solo series. Ted Cord is CEO of Cord Industries and a tech based superhero with a genius level intellect who is actually pretty mellow, especially in comparison to other heroes. While he takes being a hero, seriously, he is also not consumed by it, and usually manages to maintain a balance. He is also a bit of a goofball, and oftentimes very human. He has a problem with binge eating, which has led to his weight fluctuating despite being an Olympic level athlete, and in certain continuities has a heart condition. He has a self-sacrificing streak, and tends to be quick to forgive others much sooner than he is himself. So now let's look at these two together, to see just what has drawn some people to this ship. Well, part of it is the fast friendship these two form, bonding instantly, and getting into silly misadventures together. And as the two are essentially being established at the same time, you see them grow together, and for some, they became linked. Their bond became for some one of the highlights of the JLI, that being the Justice League International, and later Justice League America, as it was renamed a little over 20 issues in, Run. Some were quick to note that their interactions potentially inadvertently paralleled other couples, be they canon or fanon. A big fanon one they paralleled was Fire and Ice. They also had a falling out that was a little mini arc that got resolved across a couple of titles. This comic ran for years, and so the friendship became a staple, and would alas end tragically with the death of Ted Cord. Here, Booster's reaction would for some either cement or bring them into the fold. Booster risks unmaking the entire timeline to try and bring Ted back to life, and when Ted decides he needs to sacrifice himself again, Booster says sadly, I just wanted us to be together again. Booster and Beetle would still find ways to interact, despite Ted being dead. Again, time travel, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. You would also see small nods to this pairing in canon, such as in the Blue Beetle comic starring Jaime Reyes, the third Blue Beetle, where one of his supporting cast members, Milagro, says that Booster and Beetle would just have to marry each other. This one she only had their two action figures to play with. For a time, the comics would capitalize on the two as a selling point, and they would even have some storylines and a little crossover. It was no secret how some viewed this relationship. And in the Elseworlds comic Injustice 2, the two were so close, speculation was rampant even from people who were new to the characters and hence the ship. Ted even leaves everything he has to Booster in that continuity. It's sweet and totally in character because he still punks him. Even writers on Twitter have joked that given the opportunity, they would canonize Boostle. So what works for people about these two? Well, part of the appeal is seeing two characters just intrinsically get each other. The two are supportive of each other in serious times and more fun ones. Ted sees the good in Booster that few can and understands his genuine desire to be a hero, even if he can still be annoyed by his friend's rougher, more opportunistic edges. Booster, meanwhile, provides support when others are ribbing on Ted, be it for his weight gain or not being as handy in a fun as others, which again varies from canon to canon, story to story. They'll tease him, but it's for sure good-natured and 
respectful, the way good friends do. The two worry about each other and try to create the best scenarios for one another, but also have their own things and aren't codependent. They just enjoy spending time together. Only the best of friends will build you a super suit after yours breaks. Yes, that's a thing that happened. Yes, Booster tried to break time for him, but he realized he couldn't. Growth. Seeing these two together, or even just having more recent at the time of this recording interactions in main canon when they remember that they're friends, is a joy to some fans. Many find them wholesome and positive. Not that they don't have angst, but at their core. And while they may be a smaller ship, they tend to be one that is looked upon fondly. So why not ship these two? Well, one reason is shifting canons and continuities, and not knowing who they are. This ship, depending upon when you got into the comics, can be easy to miss depending upon what you were reading. There's a lot of comics out there and a lot of jumping on points. Now some prefer them as close friends and balk at shippers, asking the age-old question, why can't two men just be friends? The answer is, of course they can. Most shippers are not denying the friendship, in fact, they very much enjoy it, or that men can be platonically close, but are rather playing with tropes presented, extrapolating, and exercising their creative muscles in the way that they enjoy fandom, transformatively. While some feel the canon would benefit from these two being officially together, others do not. Shippers, like all fans, are not a monolith, and most are looking to enjoy themselves. It just so happens that since people are different, enjoyment manifests, of course, differently. Another con for some is not liking one or both characters, usually Booster, who can be abrasive and grating, especially depending upon when you're meeting him in his often resetting comics journey. Like all parts of fandom, shipping is not for everyone, and even if it is, this pairing may just not grab you. Maybe too light? Maybe for no reason at all. If it intrigues you, there's a decent amount to enjoy canonically, and a smaller but dedicated amount of fix, although many have been lost to time. So you may have to do some digging depending upon how far back you go. Check it out if you are so inclined, or stay away if this did the opposite for you. Different strokes for different folks. Are you a blue and gold shipper? Do you wish it was bigger? Or do you like your smaller but dedicated fandom? Do you wish it was canon? Let me know all of that down below. Thanks so much for watching Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and stay tuned for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.